Oh, we're well. We had some tef tech little deck difficulties here, but we're back online. Ralph goofed. Well, anyway, <laughs> that happens when technology and fingers come together. So, Lord bless you. And uh, this is the second part of it. So, here you go, Ralph. <laughs> All right. So, um, just. Uh, one of the things that might have been missed is that, you know, for those yeah. who gave their hearts to hearing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, it's a guarantee. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is a guarantee for eternity and uh, because his blood does not fail. Man may fail you. Religion may fail you. Your church may fail you. Or uh, all I can say is that uh, the kingdom of this world may fail you, but the kingdom of heaven, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we are the earth. And we thank you, Lord, that it, it's your by your divine will and by your divine presence that we come into that place where the Holy Spirit touches us and we give our and we come to that place and the door is open and we say, Yes, Jesus, I choose to invite you into my heart. So, based on the second part of this uh, telecast, uh, if you have invited the heart, your heart, Jesus into your heart, well, the Lord bless you. And if you're not quite there yet, well, Lamentations 3, verses 40 and 41 just says, well, if you lift your heart unto God and say, here's my heart, Lord, uh, I give everything unto you, well, the Lord's, he's just going to be very pleased with that. So, whatever the pain is or whatever the issues are in your life that you can no longer hold those things inside and you want to give all that pain unto God give him give him your pain give him the things that are causing the most difficulty in your life whether it be drugs or sex or all the lifestyle that goes with that or just or just the fact that you're maybe in a place that you're so lonely and rejected and you say oh lord i just want you in my life well just just lift up your heart unto him and 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 Invite Jesus into your heart. That's it's it's an easy thing. Um, the walking with Him is how Jesus is going to help you walk out your salvation in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that Holy Spirit within you will help uh, convict you to make the right choices, but will never condone, con condemn you, never condemn you, but will have you nudged in the right direction to make the right choices. Okay. Well, bless you. Um, the second part here, uh, we're, it, we're in the 12th month of, of the Hebronic calendar here, and, and eight, the month of Adar. And it's an interesting month because, you know, uh, 12 is the, is, is the apostolic order, and uh, this is kind of the 12th month of the Hebronic calendar. And the month of Adar is uh, Isaiah 42.13. And it says, Yahweh will go forth like a mighty man, like a mighty warrior, and he will stir up his zeal like a man of war. Okay, so his zeal this month is, is like a zeal within, in us that's stirring us up because he's a mighty man of war coming against the things that you heard earlier uh, based on uh, Leslie. Uh, that encourage you and in, uh, in, in the reading that she did. And uh, so we need to come to that place to know that Jesus is, is everything. And we just need to come to the place of, of uh, just being relaxed and giving everything to him. So the other thing of this month is God wants us to uh, come into a place of strength. And uh, Ephesians 6, 10 to 13 talks about Putting on the armor of God. Now, some of you may not be used to putting on or taking up the armor of God, but it, in that particular scripture, uh, does somebody have that? We can read that. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 13. And uh, whoever has that will we'll read it. And you can read along and, uh, and maybe you have some questions, put some questions up. But you see, uh, when we're walking with Christ, you know, in the kingdom of this world, uh, it's to advance the dominion of God, not your, not your dominion, but His dominion, and uh, to.
to advance the kingdom of God as it invades earth. And he wants to use us as the, how can I say, um, his extension of heaven taking earth, the kingdom of this world through earth, who is us. Does that make sense? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, his desire is to use you in a very specific way. So let's, who's got Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verses 10 to 13? Do you have that, John? Do you want to just turn that yep. a little bit to John? Yeah, yeah, yeah verses uh, 10 to 13. 10 to 13. Ephesians but, chapter 6, verses 10 to 13. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord for the power of his might. Put in the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand the well against of the devil. For if you wrestle not, for if you wrestle against flesh and blood, the powers of the principalities and against the powers of darkness and rulers of the darkness, the rulers are rulers of the age and against against the age of the spiritual host and wicked of the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor that you may be able to stand against the stand against the west sides in the of the, in the day of the evil, having done to, all to stand. There, therefore you having girded yourselves waist with the truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness, having shrouded of your feet with the presentations of the gospel of the peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, in which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always and praying with supplication and spirit and being watchful unto the end of the and supplication of all the saints mm -hmm. that and and that for me you shall be able to utter that you may be able to be given up that I may be able to open up the mouth the mouth boldly to make the gospel and the truth the mystery in which I am an ambassador in, in the chains that I may be able to speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. So in putting on the armor of God, it it talks about at the end there uh, to speak boldly. And uh, that boldness comes through the Holy Spirit that helps you. And that, that's at Romans 8, 11, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that dwells in us, that wants to come out. And when we put on the armor of God, that's to protect us because it's, it's all protection. But some of it is offensive weapons. And uh, the sword of the Spirit is an offensive weapon. And as we speak boldly and we pray, and as we pray in tongues and as we pray, it's an offensive weapon as we, as we started the meeting. And uh, do you have a question, uh, a statement there? No, I just, just uh, um, <coughs> God is impressing upon me, like, um, for those of you that know the story of David, yeah. David and Goliath, they were after him to put on the physical armor to go into battle, which is heavy. It's, we, we're not designed to carry the physical armor of God. But the spiritual armor of God, David did go out whenever he went to go after Goliath. He did have armor on. He had the spiritual armor of God on him. Yeah. And the spiritual armor of God does not weigh us down. Amen. It actually Amen. causes us to be liberated. It frees us. It gives us more uh, movement, freer movement, whenever we have the armor of God on us. It's not restricting like you would think armor to be, right? Amen. And, so that's and what this is talking about. That's what this is talking yeah. about, right? Yeah. And Second Corinthians, uh, you know, when we talk about that, Second Corinthians, I believe it's um, chapter five, verse thirteen. It says, "Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty and freedom." Yes, exactly. And uh, the Lord wants us to walk in that liberty and freedom in Him. Yeah. But uh, one of the things I talked about in in Africa, uh, Liberia was there. Uh, that really, you know, brought a, uh, how could I say, a shock and awe to some of the uh, pastors there and bishops and so on, is that it was a bit of a rebuke. And what that rebuke was, don't put on somebody else's armor. Yeah, that's right. Do not put on somebody else's ministry. Do not put on the things, what I might say is, is uh, 
uh, of man. Yeah. God says, you put on what I give you. Yeah, he also you put on what I give you. And that is the armor that you use. So in, in what Murray was talking about here, David, uh, that armor that was fitted for Saul did not fit David. Right. And uh, the other thing is, Saul wanted David to wear his armor and win the battle so Saul could get the glory based on David wearing his armor that didn't fit. So he was thinking only again for himself and the manipulation of that type of glory unto himself. So uh, God gives you a well-fitted uh, armor of God to put on. It's and uh, it's it's well fitted for you is yeah. what uh, Murray was talking about. And so he, he, that it, it, there's another scripture that that's that's coming to me. And it's in Romans. Um, uh, it just it just kind of hit me. So just give me a minute to find it. I think it's Romans chapter 13. Uh, just look, because uh, it's either Romans 13, 16 or uh uh, yeah, it's Romans 13, and uh, I'm going to read it here from verses 11 to 14. It says, put on Christ, yeah, okay? 14. Put on Christ. Or somebody else got that that would like to read it, but, and he says, and, and do this knowing the time. You know, we're in a, a time and a season right now, as I, I keep on going, getting back to 5780, God is speaking his voice for the next 10 years. So the times and seasons right now, and 2020 is a double year of blessing and so on. But here it says, and do this knowing the time, that now it is a high time to awake. Okay, so uh, those who are, have fallen asleep in the church and those who have fallen asleep in the bride of Christ or ecclesia uh, because of maybe... Uh, doing things that are not focused in regard to the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ or taking the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for granted or minimizing the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and creating spiritual aids or taking communion unworthily uh, and not confessing your sin and, and going through the forgiveness of those things and of the ministry of reconciliation. If these things are like arrows hitting you right now, that's, that's just the Holy Spirit uh, bringing some conviction there that you need to do some time with the Lord in repentance. So 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 it's high time to awake out of out of sleep and know our salvation is near than when we first believe. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. The day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. In other words in, in Psalm 36, uh, verses 8 to 10, it talks about some good things. But stand in the light to fight in the light and receive more light. In other words, quit fighting in the shade. Quit fighting in a, in a, in a diminished power of the Holy Spirit based on doctrine, based on maybe uh, sin in your life, maybe based on the lack of righteousness in your life because of uh, a double standards and a double life. God said, this has got to stop. This is a time and season that you need to be awake and keep your eyes on me, not the things of this world, and put on the armor of light so you're not fighting in the shade. I want you to fight in the light and being in the light, not in the sh shade of some, uh, how can I say, compromising situation that you put yourself into. That's not me. That's not my doctrine. That's, that's a religious thing. I want you to be in relationship, and this is the time of being, as I am a man of war, says the Lord. I am, I want you to be that, that warrior, man or woman, son or daughter of the Most High, advancing the kingdom of God, and the, God at this time and taking dominion, his land, and occupying until I return. That means not falling asleep, not being like in Matthew 25 and as far as the the talents that were given out by the master. And, and if you're the individual that the Lord gave you five talents to use and to be in the part of the, in the kingdom of this world and to advance the kingdom of God and do a, a good thing and, and you advance and increase the five talents to ten, and the, and the master says and the king says, well done, good and faithful servant. You, you, with the little that you've done, you've done great. And the same thing was with the other uh, individual that was given two talents 
And he, he doubled the uh, portion of the two talents to four. And the master said, well done, good and faithful servant. With the little that I've given you, you've done great. Well done, good and faithful servant. The master knows what he's given you and expects it a return. He expects you to advance the kingdom of God, not to be like the, like the one that received one talent and said, oh, I, I'm going to be in a place of fear because I fear my master because if I can't do anything with, with this talent that he's given me, this talent of faith, it's impossible to please God without faith. You can't bury your faith. This is a time that you have to advance the kingdom. So I pray that your eyes are open and that you fight in the light, not in the shade, or what you think God has called you to do. Say, oh, well, it's not my job to advance the kingdom of God. It's that apostle or it's that prophet. No, it's for every son and daughter of the Most High to take the brilliance of the light that's within you, around you, into the kingdom of darkness and to be part of the army of God. Did you get that? Did you receive that? Did you know silence? There is a place of awe in silence. Silent wonder. I hope you're wondering what God is doing in your life right now. And that you wake up out of your dream, out of your sleep, and come into a place of the DNA, the divine nature activated and actualized in being a son and daughter of the Most High, and doing what God has called you to do. Just read John chapter 14. There's about 12 to-dos in there. To-do, to-do, to-do. It's not to bury what God has given you in fear, because perfect love casts out fear. And if you don't have that perfect love or that, that, that strength that comes through the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ and the boldness that was read by John and, and how can I say, uh, encouraged by Murray, that boldness of who we are and putting on the, the armor of God that fits you to advance the kingdom of God. And as the Lord goes ahead of us in this time, it is we to follow him and to do as he is doing through the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? So you put on the armor of God to defeat the darkness, and we are the arrows of light in his quiver. And if you're going to bury that arrow or that talent because of fear, you know, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, everybody gets that. But what about 19? Okay? What about those that don't listen to what 18 says? It says, for those that don't listen, I'm paraphrasing, mm -hmm. just so you get it in today's language. If you don't get it, that just means that the enemy has the, how can I say? It? He has the okay to terrorize you. Perfect love casts out fear. But if you do not have that perfect love, th there's a terrorist and it's the enemy and he's going to terrorize your flesh. So. You, you better come into a place of agreement in the, in the full fullness of who you are in Christ. So that, that fear doesn't bury the talent that you are. And because Jesus said, you know, you unfaithful servant, you just buried what I wanted you to be. You can read the rest about the gnashing of teeth and that type of thing. That, that, that fear, I don't know, I, I have a heavenly reverent fear of God, but uh, I just want to be obedient. And in that obedience, uh, this is the time and season. Okay, if you're going to bury what God has got, got for you to do, I just want you to know, if you're not going to use it, God's going to tithe it to those that you are. <laughs> That's what it says in Scripture. That's what it says in Scripture. So, uh, if, you're, if you're asleep, it's a time to wake up and do what God's calling you to do. So this is the month of Adar, and this is the, this is the month that standing in the light to receive more light and to proceed in what heaven is doing on earth here. So um, I also love this month because they call it the month of the eye of the needle. <laughs> you know, the eye of the needle is an interesting concept. You know, uh, our, you know, our apostle, uh, uh, Dr. Charlotte Baker, wrote a book called The Eye of the Needle. And uh, I want you to know these parables are, are, are quite interesting to what she wrote. 
And in the in scripture, you can read about the eye of the needle and how hard it is for a rich man who has everything to go through the eye of the needle and, and leave everything behind and be able to come in and say, I want everything what the Spirit has for me, not anything of the kingdom of this world. I want everything of the kingdom of heaven. And I want you, there is a natural eye of the needle, which is a door that is actually in the wall in, in Jerusalem. And I don't know if I would fit in it right now, or Murray. I don't know if we could squeeze through that eye of the needle. It's, 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 it's for a small person. But it's a, the reason why it's a door, that means one man, one woman, can go to the eye of the needle and go through it. <laughs> and defend the whole city from the inside. Because no... <laughs> Because you're always, it doesn't matter if there's a hundred thousand coming at you, it's always going to be one at a time and you're going to win every battle. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You're standing in the light to receive the light in battle. So praise the Lord. So um, put on the armor of light as well because Jesus is the armor of light and do not compromise who you are in Christ because Rome, uh, I want, uh, Psalm 90, verse 8, it says, you know, it talks about. If there is a speck in your heart, if there is a, a hidden thing in your heart, God will bring those hidden things that are hidden in your heart at an appointed time into the light so they can be dealt with. So if this is the day that the Lord is bringing those specks, those, um, how can I say, those things of compromise, those secret sins into the light, this is a good time to repent and say, here, here they are, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Choose me. Isaiah did that in chapter 6. <coughs> Here I am, Lord. I'm an out of unclean lips. Choose me. You know what that's called? It's called Hineni. H-I-N-E-N-I. -N -E -N -I. Here I am, Lord. Choose me. Send me. So Leslie's going to speak to this. She's going to prepare to it. Yes. Uh, she, uh, she, had this, she had this sermon and had this uh, teaching to give, but the opportunity didn't present itself, but it's presenting itself right now. Because many of you are saying, here I am, Lord, uh, as, as it might be in uh, um, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter, chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. It says there's all kinds of maybe different things inside you that of darkness that's hidden. And God says, no, I'm bringing it into the light. It seems like this seems to be a, a light day. This seems to be a day that God is, uh, is bringing things into the light to bring, to, to bring purification and righteousness. And... Uh, so just as Leslie's getting ready for that, I want you to go to Psalm chapter 12, verse 6. Okay? Now, we did speak this in, um, in Africa. And for those that were at that particular meeting, and when, when uh, the Lord rained down his righteousness and, his, uh, and the purity of that, um, uh, if you... You can just uh, contact them, you know, uh, Bishop uh, uh, Fatimata Favor Abisio. Uh, she had, and all her people of that particular church, uh, which is called, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, her church is called uh, uh, Eternity, Eternity uh, Christian Blessing or something. I'm sorry, I, I should have had it written in front of me. But here we go, Psalm, Psalm 12, verse 6. I, I know I should have everything in front of me, so my, my memory is always good. But it's Eternal I, Life Christian Ministry. Eternal Life Christian Ministry. We did a three day cr uh, crusade there, and I want you to know um, you can contact them and ask them in regards to the glory of the Lord that fell, because it was a special special time where the glory of the Lord fell. Um, the Lord gave me uh, a vision of Ezekiel chapter 1, and uh, that was prophesied over me about 10, 15 years ago, and it actually physically and naturally and spiritually happened in her church uh, of Ezekiel's will and the presence of God falling. The, the, how could I say? You could feel the, the four living creatures above and the waves of the wings pouring down upon us and the shooting of uh, how could I say the lightning from heaven that came down on Ezekiel's wheel 
in that, in that particular. It, w- it was a beautiful time being in the presence of God. But let's just. It, but there were some things that happened prior to it, and and one of them was the righteousness that happened the day prior to that in in that three day meeting. And in this scripture I gave it says. Uh, the words of the Lord are pure words. In other words, pure, uh, there's a sanctification and a righteousness in pure. And the, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is God. And John 1.14 talks about how Jesus is the living Word that speaks. So, uh, so these words of the Lord are pure words. Like silver tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. So I want you to know there's a crucible and that that purification of the righteousness of the word of God that we are who are the servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is going to purify us seven times, you know, and I say that it's, it's like a, it's, it's like uh, being going. It's like going through a process of the purity and the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know the blood is a wonderful thing, and the cross is a wonderful thing, and that that has all the things in regards to who we are in Christ, in regards to our righteousness and our salvation. But if we are going to serve Him in the ecclesia, in the in the fivefold ministry, in the apostolic flow, we there's going to be things inside us. There's going to be dross. There's going to be certain things that are hidden that God wants to get out, so the purity of His word goes. Now, Judith, if you just want to turn turn the uh, um, uh, just turn it towards Judith because she had a prophetic word, and that prophetic word that she gave, if you want to explain it again in regards to the altar and and the sheep uh, uh, and so on. For those in those in Africa, if you just turn to Judith, they're going to go like wow because this is what they saw. Okay, when we we're in the in the second day in regards to the altar, just turn nice and easy to Judith towards Judith. And there you go. The prophetic word that you gave. Um, I prophetically saw Apostle Ray on the altar, the platform, and there was like a blanket laid out on top of the floor, the platform, and he was holding this basin, and it was full of white sand. And he would put his hand in and he would take it out and throw it across the white blanket altar to lead. And he would continue to do this. And the Lord was showing me that it was the purity that was going on in purity. He was sharing the purity of the word and the love of God and whatever else he was referring to. I don't know, but that's mainly what I got out of that. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Judith. So, okay. those that were there that day, um, it, it was videotaped, and I, I prostrated myself. Now, in in uh, Bishop uh, Fatimata's uh, church, uh, it, the altar is in the center of the church, and what she did, I, I asked her uh, because of the fire of God and the uh, if she if she could uh, cover. Cover the altar, and she and she did with a beautiful red effervescent fire of God. And this particular altar, it was big enough to handle. You could put 20, 30 people on it. It was pretty big. It was circular. Right? It was circular and it was pretty big. So, uh, and and what you put in the center of it was the king's chair, and it was draped in fire, uh, fiery. Uh, how could I say? Uh, the fire of God in certain materials, and it looked very beautiful. There was gold, and uh, I break my tallit, the, the white tallit on, on the top of it. And the presence of God, you know, the presence of God was there, and it was a beautiful thing that happened. And we just were given the opportunity to be there. And then what I did is I prostrated myself on, uh, on, my, on my belly, which is called Shekan, in the place of worship, and I started to pray Second Chronicles 7, 1-3. And in that, it talks about how the holy, the holy priest prostrated himself in the glory and in, 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 in the presence of God. And uh, that's what happened. <laughs> the presence of God fell. And the white, what I, I, I believe the, the white, what 
that was uh, prophesied by Judith was the purity and the righteousness of God that, that I was laying upon. And as uh, I, w I just want you to understand, uh, uh, when, I was, when I was laying pro prostrate, I, was, uh, I, had, I had my Bible, okay, and I had a microphone as I lay, it was right in my mouth as I was on the floor and I was prophesying. And as I was prophesying, I was also praying the word. And this went on for, I would say, 20 minutes, half an hour, maybe more. So as I was prophesying, the, the, the word and the prophecy was going out and going out and going out uh, to the many people all around that were in the, not only in the building, but also in all Liberia, because I was prophesying in regards to not only Liberia, but West Africa and, and what was what the upcoming how can I say the greatest move of God that's ever going that we're ever going to be a part of and it was a it was a blessing it was just such a blessing so the purity of God the righteousness of God is so important for us to be because Jesus is coming back for his church without spot or wrinkle so if we have spots and wrinkles wrinkles in us it's not white <laughs> we're we're not white we're we're kind of polka dot he's not coming back for Dalmatians <laughs> You understand? He's coming back for a pure, purified bride of Christ. And what was being spoken out of, you know, out of the bowl, okay? We, you can look in Revelations, there's all kinds of bowls. But there, all I was speaking was the purity and the righteousness of God to be received by all. And, so, and it was a beautiful time. So the I am, Jehovah Sham that I am. You know the burning bush that you read in mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 3, verse 3, and it goes all the way through there. I, I, it's a beautiful conversation between Adonai when you read it in the Hebrew. I want you to know it's a beautiful conversation. And in that conversation, I'm going to pass this right to Leslie in a minute. So God, Adonai, is speaking to the angel of the Lord that comes into the fire too. Did you know that that fire, that, that flaming fire that was red, that nobody could get burnt up, is the same fire today of the Holy Spirit? The fiery red of the Holy Spirit of, of Luke chapter 3, verse uh, uh, 13 to 15, 16. Eh? It's the fire of the Holy Spirit that Adonai was sitting in, that the angel of the Lord, and the conversation in the Hebrew is, Adonai is speaking to Yeshua. <laughs> Yeshua is speaking to Adonai. And where is Moses? And Adonai says to Moses, you're standing on holy ground. Moses, take off your shoes. Well, today, the spirit of the living God is within us, so we are the holy ground. We are yeah. the holy earth. We don't have to take our shoes off. It says, shod your feet with the gospel, the preparation of peace, as we just read, as John just read, as part of the, part of the armor of God that we put on, that we can walk in this world. And be part of it. And did you know what, what Moses said? He said, Hineni in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. After Adonai had spoken to him. Yeah. Out of the burning bush of the Holy Spirit. And Yeshua had spoken. Moses says, Hineni, here I am, send me. Leslie, can you take it from here? Yeah, just, just turn it. There you go. So I'm just, uh, I'm actually taking this. It's, it's not an original from me by any means. Um, it's a, a, a teaching out of um, the one for Israel, uh, and, uh, and Hineni, here I am, send me. So there's a powerful word in the Hebrew that we've already just heard that sums up three words in English. The word Hineni, which means here I am. But you've got to watch out how you say it, because it is a way of expressing total readiness to give oneself. It's an offer of total availability. When God called out to Moses from the burning bush, Moses replied, Hineni. So we've just heard about that. And you know what assignment he was given, and then what happened next. Mm -hmm. When God approached Abraham to ask him to offer his only son as a sacrifice, Abraham responded, Hineni. 
not knowing what God was really about to ask him. God called out to the young boy Samuel three times before Samuel finally responded. Hineni, I'm listening. Many hundreds of years later, when God asked who would go for him in Isaiah 6, the prophet willingly offered himself with the cry of, Hineni, send me. It can, it can be used for family members or used by family members, ready to be fully available and ready to pay attention, or, to, or ready to obey instructions. A bit like turning up and reporting for duty. Yep. Some translations include a behold in the here am I statement, emphasizing that they are present and ready for action. It is often children saying it is, a, it is as an expression of readiness to submit to their parents' requests, although not exclusively. And it is, of course, the appropriate way to respond to God whenever he calls. Amen. His wish should be our command. But God often says it of himself when announcing what he is going to do. Often, they are very gracious acts that cost him dearly. Interestingly, the very first one is, the bringing, is bringing the flood. We cannot imagine how much that must have hurt him to do. But God also says, Hineni, when he is announcing a covenant that he will make, mm. the brunt of which he would always end up bearing. It appears many times in the prophetic writings, often translated, Behold, I will. But it is more like, Behold, here I am doing this thing. Mm. God is our ever-present help as David reminds us in Psalm 46. And there are multiple times through Scripture where we read the question, what can I do for you? As ridiculous as it might seem, God actually makes himself available to us and has shown that he is ready to pay the highest cost, even the life of his only son. He invites us to share his requests and needs with him. And he's always listening to our cry. Hineni, here I am. The great I am stoops to assure us. He hears us. He sees us. He knows our struggles. And he's always there. He is mighty. He is our rescuer. And the dread warrior by our side. He promises to listen to our prayers and to answer according to his will, the very best and perfect decision will be made. There's a verse buried in the, in the David and Jonathan saga in which Jonathan promises his, his beleaguered best friend, tell me what your soul desires and I will do it for you, in 1 Samuel 20, verse 4. It caught my attention because it's the same kind of devoted readiness as the shout of Hineni. Sometimes I believe that the Lord would whisper this in our ear. As, breaking, as breathtaking as that might sound, it happens. God says it to Solomon, and Yeshua says it to people that he met in this earthly ministry sometimes. What would you like me to do for you? So we might want to, when we're spending our time with Jesus, listen, and he's saying, what would you want me to do for you? But then I thought that I wanted to ask the Lord the same question. What is on your heart, Lord? What do you desire? And I will do whatever you ask. Knowing God, that is a dangerous promise to make. He does ask people to do some pretty wild things, but it's always totally worth it. God has already shown his great willingness his devotion, and his availability to us as was perfectly demonstrated on the cross. He is permanently listening to whatever we have to say or to ask for. But do we shrink back from unconditionally responding to his call and his request of us? This calls for love. This calls for devotion. Availability and willingness to sacrifice for the other. God is devoted to us, but will he find unconditional devotion and readiness to pay the cost in us? What if God was to call your name out loud today? Are you ready to offer yourself to his service, 
not even knowing what it might be? We don't have to wait until we hear an audible, audible call. We can just report for duty as we come into his presence and tell him we're ready to do his will. Ready for action, present and correct. Here I am, Lord. Heneni, send me. And that's that. Hmm. You know, the beautiful part, I'm just going to ask you to pray right now for all of those. Mm-hmm. You know, around this table, mm-hmm. there are so many of us that God has already said, mm-hmm. Heneni, you know, I'm preparing you. Just like Isaiah, Isaiah, the prophet was being prepared. You know, uh, you know, when you read Isaiah chapter 6, how he was being prepared, it's like there is the Father and, and the Lord uh, kind of talking back and for, forth at, based on the glory of God and sitting at the throne and say, oh, there's Isaiah. Oh, I guess we should uh, talk to Isaiah. Well, it, you know, I want you to know they were already preparing Isaiah for this because he was already in the presence of them in the throne room. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if you're already being prepared in the presence of God you know, as it says in Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, that we're seated in heavenly places. Do you not think when we're seated in heavenly places that we are being prepared? Mm, amen. <laughs> of course you're being prepared to do the service of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You know, so just receive what he has. I, 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 the I am, Jehovah Shammah, that I, I am, that I am, that I am, you know, uh, the I am is a wonderful, uh, you know, the I am is the presence of God about us all the time. But I just want you to know, Jehovah Shammah, but the I am is, is Jesus. He is the presence that is within us all the time. Amen. He is the I am, is alive all the time. Like resurrection life, apostolic alive. In everything that I write, I put that there at the bottom. So just bring that in beside, behind uh, Leslie, uh, uh, Pastor Leslie there. Uh, mm-hmm. Turn this thing around and just take a look at this. This this here is uh, 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 Shannon, who's a worshiper and a flag that she's received, and it's called the I Am. Now, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Oh, it's a, a, it's a, it's a, the I Am is a blaze in fire. And if you look at all the colors about it, and the, it looks like flowers, and well, that's the shalom of God. That's the peace of God. Because uh, shalom means every color, every flower, every fragrance that the Father in heaven has created. The I am is right now flowing through. So, Hineni is, uh, uh, so Leslie, can you just stand on the other side of the I am? Just, just stand right there with your colors. Okay, do you see that? You see? So here's the statement. No, no, no I want to see you. Okay, so Shannon, just drop it a bit so we can see your head. Okay, good. Now, have you got all that? So do you see yep. what it's saying? Do you see what it's saying prophetically? Do you see what it's saying prophetically? The I am is in you. Amen. It is in you, Leslie, and each and every one of us. And the I am is on fire in you to take the I am is to the nations, to the you to your neighbor, to those that you love. The I am is alive now. The I am is the fire of God that's on you, around you, and coming out of you, and expelling the darkness in the kingdom of this world, and the kingdom of heaven comes down is the I am is in you alive, in resurrection life, apostolic alive, in each and every one of you. Ecclesia. That is the kingdom of God invading earth, okay? And taking dominion of this earth. And the same thing, if, if, if you flip it over here to Murray, let's just kind of stay right there. Uh, if Murray could get over there and have him stand. But Murray uh, just heard, you know, you, you need to stand on the other side, the mm-hmm. I am is. No, the other side, the other side, the other side. The I am is. Because you see, uh, the I am spoke to Murray. And then within a week, he's in uh, Colombia preaching the word of God, not knowing who exactly he's going to meet. But the I am is, was alive, and prepared even things, and even even fixed the broken vehicle to get him around with. You know what? You understand? The I am is is going to 
He's going to fix everything in the natural, the physical, the spiritual, and the fire of God is going to go forward. It doesn't matter what nation God's going to send it to you, whether it's Uganda, whether it's your, your son that's somewhere in West Africa or Central Africa, whether he's in Chad, whether, whether he's in Kenya, whether he's, it doesn't matter where he is, God is going to be with him. Do you understand? And up in McCreary, the ladies of McCreary, the fire of God that's in the center of North America, the Keystone Province, what God is doing for the Keystone Province right now, and the fire that's coming out of here. You look at the gold that is on this table. The gold that's on this table is a prophetic mantle that was given to us by, uh, uh, by, the, by the, the leaders of West Africa. And anybody that wears this particular, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, over you, everybody recognizes the authority that you are in the natural in every place in West Africa and probably Africa that would put this on. I want you to know you're walking in the I am is. You've got the same fire and the glory of God upon you like this. You don't have to put on any cloth for the people of that region to know who you are. I want you to know the enemy knows exactly who you are because you are set aflame. You are the fire of God and the I am is in you and you're taking authority. So be bold as, as John read out of Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 13. Put on the armor of God. Put on and take out the sword of the spirit, which is a blaze, a firing sword of the spirit, a blaze. And the word of God, be bold and speak that in the times and seasons right now. I, look at the fire. There, look, there it is. The firing sword of the Lord ablaze. You know, wow. uh, that's in each, that's the word of God that's in, I know that's an angel that, that appears that be, have wings. Mm -hmm. I want you to know each and every one of you that speaks the word of God has the flaming sword mm -hmm. and the authority and the boldness. Just take it up and mm -hmm. use it. Get it out of the sheath. You're called to do this. Mm -hmm. And if you just be obedient, you say, here I am, Lord, send me. I, I want you to know he will. Amen. He will. He's preparing you. He will. Are you ready, Barb? Are you ready, Barb? Huh? Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so if you just turn over here, Barb, was, Barb asked us today, what happens and how do you feel when you are speaking in front of so many people? Well, how do you feel right now, Barb, when you're speaking in front of the world right now? And changing the word. If I'm king, I would be awesome. I would be just so awesome. If you, so if you were to speak any truth, to anybody out there that might have some, how could I say, self-confidence issue or some, some reluctance to speak the word of God, what would you say to them? Mm -hmm. I just say, take up your cross and run with it because it belongs to Jesus and you are part of him and he is part of you. And together, you are united. Amen. 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 You see? Heneni. So uh, we're excited about all the things that are happening. And the, in Minneapolis, uh, you know, uh, 20th to the 24th, we'll be there for a conference there with uh, Victory Outreach Church, and we'll see whoever joins us in the team and so on. And then in April, we're going to be part of the uh, uh, Kingdom Conference down in uh, Bismarck, and uh, that's going to be an awesome thing. So if you need a direction down there, I want you to know that is going to be a Kingdom Conference kingdom thing that God is doing in Bismarck in April uh, around the uh, 20th or so uh, if you're interested just text me we'll give you the give you the we'll send you the brochure and you want to know something what's going to happen in September well we're going to be doing a kingdom conference in Winnipeg yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the long weekend in yeah. September uh, we're, we're going to be doing a kingdom conference Kingdom Conference in Canada, in Winnipeg, in the center. And we're part of it, okay? So, and we want you to be part of it too. So, Hineni, here I am, Lord, send me. Send me to be your servant, servant of the living God. A servant of the living God, sent to do your purpose, to advance the kingdom of God, to bring love, acceptance, and forgiveness an unconditional love, an unconditional forgiveness, an unmeasured acceptance for those who are broken. 
And we thank you, Lord, that we can walk in this covenant together. It doesn't matter what the denomination is. We just want to walk in unity in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to bring freedom and to set the captives free to whatever uh, situation might be where people are in bondage to break that bondage, to break those prisons and set them free. It doesn't matter what the denomination so that we can be united and strong together in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we love you so much. Thank you for tuning in from the sunroom here in... Uh, Leslie, do you want to slip behind me here? We're just saying goodbye. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't know, come on over and say goodbye to Africa, <laughs> all those people that love you there. Say, you know, like, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, there's some people that, uh, there that what you'd want to say, okay, uh, Kanelta, we love you, you know, uh, you, prophet, prophetess of God. I know you're coming here from May the, uh, in, in May and June for some training and stuff. We're waiting for that. And you too, Emily. Uh, waiting for you too, and a, a number of other of the of our leaders in Afri West Africa that are coming. So, uh, so much happening in the next six months. But bless you, bless you as we advance the kingdom of God, and we're all part of His army, and we're all part of Himeni. Here I am, Lord. Send me to your divine purpose, your perfect will. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Bless you until we meet again. Amen. 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 Yep. <laughs>